Hi, welcome back to another Moment in Crime. This being April and 420, when marijuana advocates often gather on April 20th to uh, celebrate pot, I thought it would be interesting to go back to 2005 and what was Saskatchewan's largest grow operation busted by RCMP. On August 21st, 2005, a large team of RCMP officers gather just before dawn in Echo Valley Provincial Park. They includes members of the emergency response team, a tactical team in, in full gear and with armored vehicles. And what they are preparing to do is execute a pre-dawn raid on a rural property on the Pasqua First Nation. Sometime earlier from the air, an RCMP officer saw what looked like a number of greenhouses, and they suspect that this is a large-scale grow operation. As the investigation progressed, what officers found on that site proved to be the largest grow operation of marijuana in this province, and it included four plots filled with marijuana plants, and then six large sort of makeshift greenhouses. They recovered some 6,100 plants from that site. An officer later would testify that the value of these plants could have been anywhere from $3 million to $7.5 million. I remember going down to the RCMP uh, detachment and they had, a, they had enlisted the help of a farmer with a grain truck and they had tons of these plants filling this uh, truck that would normally be used for grain. And there was this, this smell that just sort of filled the air from this, this freshly cut down uh, hot plants. It was eventually taken outside the city and, and destroyed at a site. Police never said where. In 2008, the trial gets underway. Six people were on trial. It became sort of a combination of, of drug trial, uh, spiritualism, culture, uh, and as well, in some ways, some of the early advocacy for medical marijuana. Amongst the six people that went on trial, one of them was considered the leader who was heading up this operation. There was another fellow who was actually a, a gardener from Ontario who'd spent a bit of time down in Belize and uh, learned the finer art of, of growing pot. It was quite a large scale operation. There was all kinds of, of lines and watering systems and fertilizer equipment. There were a number of people who actually worked on the grow up in the same way that you might hire staff to, to come work in the Lumsden Valley during the, the you know, when the vegetables are, are in harvest there. Um, there was a record book that was seized and it had the names of all the workers, the shifts they had been working. Um, the leader who took the stand essentially said that what he was growing was medicine, that he had a right to grow medicine. In the end, what was really at issue for the jury was, was this pot and was it in violation of the laws as they existed then? And the jury agreed it was. And so three of the men were convicted, three were acquitted. I remember as they came out uh, of the, the back of the, the courthouse, they were still professing their innocence, still saying that what they had done was, was really not wrong and that what they were trying to do was uh, bring medicine to their people. In the aftermath of the trial, uh, one of the other things that I found quite interesting was there was a bit of a backlash from within the Indigenous community against 
these men and some of the defenses that they had tried to raise during the trial. They were criticized not only by the Federation of Sovereign Indigenous Nations, but also by the chief of the Pasqua First Nation, saying that they were trying to use their culture to defend what was really criminal uh, activity. During the trial, there was a lot of talk about how this operation was to produce medicine. But when the judge sentenced the three men, one of the things he said was he had absolutely no doubt that the large-scale operation was also about growing money.